What started out with two brothers and a dream to create an amazing indie game grew to a hugely successful title, selling 6 million copies worldwide, winning several awards, and having its own Netflix animated series. So how did Cuphead become so incredibly successful? This is the evolution of Cuphead. Cuphead was the first game developed by studio MDHR. It's a Canadian indie game development studio that started with brothers Chad and Jared Moldenhauer. As kids, the brothers loved playing games on the Sega Master System. Whenever they weren't gaming, they were having drawing competitions with friends. They also loved watching 1930s cartoons from Disney Animation and Fleischer Studios. Before the creation of Cuphead, both Chad and Jared had their own separate careers. However, in 2010, there was a boom of independent games that were often created by just two or three people. They felt inspired to do the same. One of those inspiring games was Super Meat Boy. The game became a massive critical and financial success, which inspired the brothers to start working on their passion project. Chad and Jared decided to go all in and put their time, labor, and money into this project, so it had to be something they truly loved. They wanted to create a run-and-gun concept, which they loved as kids. They were inspired by games such as Contra and Gunstar Heroes. They knew they needed a visual hook to set them apart from all the other amazing indie titles already out there. The brothers loved human imperfections and wanted everything to look handmade. They made all kinds of drawings in different styles, until they tried the rubber hose style animation from the early Disney and Fleischer era, which they loved to watch as kids. Immediately, they knew that this was what they wanted the game to look like. However, there was one problem, a big one. In the 1930s, almost all animation was done on ones, meaning a unique drawing would be required for all 24 frames per second. So, 24 unique drawings per second of animation. As you can imagine, that was a massive amount of work, and, well, Chad was the only one doing the art. Chad hand-drew the animations and painted the backgrounds using watercolors. Jared worked on other aspects of the game, and together they discussed the gameplay design. The brothers described Cuphead as having a tough, old-school gaming core, since it focused more on its gameplay than the plot. In 2013, the brothers decided to stop working full-time on their day jobs and instead work part-time to focus more on their ambitious project. Chad's wife, Maja Moldenhauer, also joined the team as well as a programmer. Together, they created the first Demo Boss. Immediately after people saw the game's concept, publishers started calling, which helped the brothers believe they had something special in their hands. Interestingly, Maja Moldenhauer left the financial sector to help her husband and his brother in the creation of Cuphead. She tried inking for the game and turned out to be a natural. Nonetheless, it was a very time-consuming job as everything was done by hand. Why by hand? Inking on paper captured subtle details that were almost impossible digitally, like the way ink settles into paper, the nuanced imperfections of inking pens, and all the other welcome chaos of traditional mediums. Maja never returned to working in the financial sector and inked the vast majority of Cuphead's 45,000 plus frames. Fun fact, the first prototype was very rough, to say the least. It just looks like a Flash game from Newgrounds. In 2015, Cuphead grew bigger than the brothers could have ever imagined when the game's trailer was shown during E3, which is a major gaming event. Chad and Jared knew that this was the moment to go all in and took a big risk by remortgaging their houses to be able to invest in a larger team. Artists, programmers, and musicians joined the team. Studio MDHR was becoming a studio full of passionate people who put their hearts and souls into pursuing this wild idea that had never been done before. Fun fact, it took Studio MDHR over seven years to develop the game, 
It's easy to understand why development took so long, considering all the drawings were done by hand, just as the early Disney and Fleischer cartoons were made in the 1930s. This means every boss, character, projectile, action, and frame is hand-drawn. Just think of the work required to make just one battle, let alone the whole game. From the start, the goal was to make Cuphead a two-player experience. So Cuphead and Mugman were created, who were brothers and best friends, just like Chad and Jared. They were inspired by Oswald, Felix the Cat, and of course, Mickey Mouse. Just like Mickey Mouse, the characters would receive iconic gloves and boots. To create the main characters, over 100 iterations were made, ranging from animals to magical humans. The goal was simple. The characters needed to be instantly recognizable, even as silhouettes. One character stood out like no other, and that was a cup and straw. To give more life to the characters, they received different personalities. While Cuphead is very confident and adventurous, which often leads him into trouble, Mugman, the loyal younger brother, is more cautious and a bit of a warrior. Besides the main characters, there are also some non-playable characters, including Mac, who is the first NPC you meet after leaving Elder Kettle's cottage. He has a Macintosh apple for a head and starred in an animated short when Cuphead was launched on Mac computers. There is also Porkrind, who is a rough salesman with a wagon-based store. He was inspired by the shopkeeper in Sega's Wonder Boy 3 and the pigs from the 1938 Betty Boop cartoon, Be Up To Date. Fun fact, the original inspiration for Cuphead came from a 1936 Japanese animation called Evil Mickey Attacks Japan. It was a pre-World War II anti-American propaganda film. In the animation, a character with a giant cup of a head turns into a tank. This became the inspiration for Cuphead and Mugman. Cuphead and Mugman are on a mission to save their souls from the devil. And throughout the aisles, adventure awaits with many boss fights. Each boss fight includes a simple, normal, and for those who completed the game, an expert difficulty mode. Let's go through each aisle and their bosses. One of the first bosses created was Goopy Legrand. At the start of the match, the bow is a nod to Felix the Cat, who would frequently remove parts of his body for visual gags. Another boss that was created early on was Root Pack, which was meant as a welcoming battle to learn the game's mechanics. Remember kids, eat your carrots, and you too get telekinetic powers. Interestingly, the game also has secret bosses, including Horus Radish. He appears when you don't fire for a few seconds when the second boss of the Root Pack, Ollie Bulb, appears. Originally, every boss was going to have a boss secret. However, eventually just three boss secrets were added. Ribby and Croaks have the unique distinction of being the only two characters in the game besides Cuphead and Mugman. They are fighting hooligans, inspired by the Street Fighter series. Originally, Cuphead and Mugman would receive a completely custom move set with classic Street Fighter moves like the Fireball and Dragon Punch. However, to keep the design in line with the rest of Cuphead's boss battles, this idea was scrapped. Hilda Berg is the first shoot 'em up boss in the game. In the final phase, the team wanted to create something special. That's why they created a massive retro futuristic moon, which was one of the most complex animations they made. From the start, the brothers knew they wanted an anthropomorphic plant as a boss. They were often featured in 1930s animations, including the 1932 Disney animation Flowers and Trees. That's why Cagney Carnation was created, who has fought in Floral Fury. It is one of the more iconic bosses in Cuphead, and its name comes from James Cagney, a famous film star from the 1930s who was known for his dance moves. Fun fact, Cuphead won the Guinness World Record for the number of boss battles in a run-and-gun game by having more than 30, compared to the record's 25 in Alien Soldier.
While Inkwell Isle 1 started off in the bright countryside, a place that seemed far away from the devil, Inkwell Isle 2 threw in a bit more chaos, with a circus in town. One of the earliest bosses is Baroness von Bonbon, who is a reference to Marie Antoinette, the last queen of France before the French Revolution. In the game, her head can come off as she was beheaded in real life, and a famous quote often attributed to her was, let them eat cake. I truly love the creativity in the game. Other bosses on the island are Beppy the Clown, Wally Warbles, Jimmy the Great is the only boss in the game with five unique phrases, and there is Grim Matchstick, with a dragon being the hero's ultimate test. The name comes from Grim Natwick, a lead animator for Snow White. Grimm's Hydra is often considered one of the most difficult bosses in the game to defeat, but it was also one of the most difficult bosses to create. It was very complex, since they wanted to imbue personality to each head, and all three heads were animated on separate layers while the animations had to be in sync. Fun fact! Countless gamers have competed in speedruns for Cuphead by completing the entire game as fast as possible. On speedrun.com, the world record for regular difficulty is by Grangius, who completed the game in just 28 minutes and 13 seconds. The Third Isle has some of the hardest bosses and pays homage to the hustle and bustle of the big city. The first boss you encounter here is Rumor Honeybottoms. She is a tribute to the corporate 9 to 5 culture that emerged during the 1920s and 30s. She is literally a busy bee with a hive to run. There's also Captain Brinybeard. The pirate was one of the first bosses created and, according to Studio MDHR, the first boss where the true Cuphead style fully came together with combinatorial hazards. The boss fight took references and inspiration from Disney's King Neptune and the pirate from Felix the Cat's The Goose Who Laid the Golden Egg. Besides a pirate, there's also the mermaid Kayla Maria. From a cute mermaid to Medusa to a floating head, this basically is 1930s animation in a nutshell. During the design process, the team knew they wanted a dangerous, stun-lock moment. This idea came to fruition in the second phase, where an energy blast will turn you into stone. Sally's stage play is most likely inspired by Sally Swing, a blonde character from Betty Boop. Another fun bit of trivia, her voice is actually voiced by a male. Warner Worman in the Marine Corps boss fight has a Tom and Jerry feel. The rat is probably based on Jerry, and in World War I, Jerry's was slang for German soldier. Very creative. I also love the intense plot twist of the cat being a robot. Dr. Call's robot is one of the hardest bosses in the game. During development, it was decided to change things up by making it the first boss where players can direct the first phase. There are three parts players can attack. And once destroyed, a new hazard arises. The studio stated, quote, We wanted the player to feel like they were chipping away at a barrage of enemies, only to find themselves in even deeper trouble. The most influential inspiration for the boss was the 1933 Disney cartoon, Mickey's Mechanical Man. Behind every violent giant robot is a mad scientist, which you'll face in the final phase of the boss fight. Before Cuphead and Mugman can go into the casino, they'll have to face Phantom Express in Railroad Wrath. Rather than a single boss morphing into different forms, the studio decided that the entirety of the Phantom Train fight was a series of fights against different monsters instead. The final area of the game is the casino in Inkwell Hell. Before facing the devil, players must first encounter the right hand of the devil, King Dice. Players have to roll a dice and take on different challenging fights based on the number they get. The idea of rolling the dice to face different challenges is inspired by the Dice Palace stage in Gunstar Heroes. In the King Dice minigames, players can fight multiple bosses, including Tipsy Troop, a trio of boozy baddies, Chips Bedigan, Mr. Wheezy, giving Cuphead a smoking good time. Interestingly, he's brought to life by King Dice, but he also puts an end to him at the end of the fight. Pip and Dot, the domino husband and wife duo. 
I love the death animation with Pip getting kicked right in the face. Hope is Pocus, who gets pulled out of the hat by King Dice. Fear Lap is named after a horse racing champion, Far Lap. Talk about beating a dead horse. Pirouetta. Mangastein, who is a love letter to Melon Bread from Alien Soldier and Gunstar Heroes. And there is Mr. Chimes. After beating the mini bosses, it is time to fight King Dice himself. Fun fact, Cuphead is rated E10 plus by the ESRB because of mild cartoon violence, but also because of alcohol and tobacco references. Then it's time to face the ultimate evil, the devil. Interestingly, while the rest of the Cuphead bosses were developed out of order and concurrently, the devil was saved for last, as they wanted the final battle to be as epic as possible by using everything they had learned over the years. The last phase in the boss fight, one hell of a time, was also the last piece of art the studio created for Cuphead. The art was inspired by Disney's 1941 Fantasia, which is surprising since the rest of Cuphead is mostly inspired by the rubber hose animation from the 1930s. The studio explained this by saying, we felt that this final battle was us metaphorically moving into the next stage of our evolution as a team, and we wanted the art and animation to symbolize that progression as well. Fun fact, seven artists created the Devil Boss Fight, which was a massive project with almost 2,500 frames of animation. In 2017, Cuphead was officially released for PC and the Xbox One. A port of Cuphead for Mac OS was released four years later. In 2019, the game was also released for the Nintendo Switch, and in 2020, for the PlayStation 4. Cuphead is a run-and-gun game filled with boss fights and multiple run-and-gun levels. Players can purchase weapons and special abilities from the in-game shop, Pork Rinds Emporium, Cuphead can be played either solo or with two players. In the levels, players can use a slapping parry attack on objects that are pink and fill a super meter that enables more powerful attacks. After completing a level, the player is ranked with a grade based on performance. Cuphead is known for its difficulty. It's often called the Dark Souls of 2D games. Game journalist Dean Takahashi tried for 26 minutes to complete the tutorial and the first level, failing 31 times before giving up. Let's just take a moment to congratulate Dean on not dying on the tutorial. This just proves that anyone, and I mean anyone, can be a game journalist. While Cuphead is obviously a challenging game, the developer's goal was to make it tough but fair. This meant players shouldn't rely on pure memorization, but rather the player's ability to adapt and react on the fly through a core skill set. In the plot, Cuphead and his brother Mugman are two children who enter the Devil's Casino and play a dice game. When they go on a winning streak, the Devil appears and offers to raise the stakes. Win one more roll and all the loot in my casino is yours. But if you lose, I'll have your souls. Deal? The brothers lose and beg for mercy. The devil makes another deal with the brothers. If they can collect the soul contracts from his runaway debtors by midnight the next day, then he might spare them. Cuphead was very well received and praised for its art style, gameplay, soundtrack, and difficulty. Telegraph said in their review, quote, From the backgrounds to the animations to the bold colors, Cuphead is a love letter to classic cartoons and platform shooters, fine-tuned and tweaked, so it plays like a dream. IGN called every scene a masterwork. They also praised the sound and called it an ideal match to the aesthetics. On Metacritic, Cuphead received an impressive score of 88. The game also won multiple awards, including Best Xbox Game of the Year by Golden Joystick Awards and Outstanding Achievement in Art Direction by DICE Awards. Cuphead became a massive success. In the first two weeks of release, more than one million copies were already sold. In total, over 6 million copies have been sold. Fun fact, Cuphead is also playable in Tesla cars. In June 2019, a port for Tesla's Linux-based operating system was released as part of Tesla's software version 10. That's really cool.
In February 2022, an animated series based on the Cuphead game called The Cuphead Show was developed for Netflix. It's surreal to see a small indie game that was developed with lots of passion blow up everywhere. And now, it even has a show on Netflix. Chad and Jared both served as executive producers. The show was praised for its visuals and humor. Currently, it has 12 short episodes. Season 2 is in the making and will be released in summer 2022. During E3 2018, a DLC for the Cuphead game titled The Delicious Last Course was revealed. Initially, it was going to be released in 2019. However, due to the COVID pandemic, the release date was pushed back all the way to June 30th, 2022. The Delicious Last Course features Miss Chalice as a brand new playable character. The name's Chalice. Ms. Chalice. But listen, you don't want to get mixed up with a gal like me. The DLC will also add new weapons, charms, a quest, and there's a new inkwell aisle with new bosses. Fun fact, in 2019, the album's selected tunes from Cuphead topped the jazz album's Billboard charts. I find it very inspiring to see how far the brothers have come with their passion to create Cuphead. Just like Cuphead, we also put a lot of effort and passion into these videos and animations. So please, subscribe and leave a like. Thank you.